No real surprises. Zaya or Rakan, a possibility. Ignar's Rakan last week was fantastic. It was, but there's enough good uh, picks here for Ignar that you know, even if he gets a few bans against him, he's gonna be fine. Uh, Elise, as always, a standard pick to look for when you have Jankos in the game. Max Law has been more of a, a Lee Sin kind of guy. More? Uh, I mean, eight games Lee Sin. Exactly. Zach on yeah, three. Yeah. Very much more of a Lee Sin uh, kind of guy. Uh, that means Misfits Gaming uh, might actually remove Elise if they don't want to trade it and if they don't want to first pick it, but I think they can also just take it from Max Lord. I'm so excited you mentioned Ignar's other picks to Fischio because Blitzcrank is banned. Uh, he's fine. Phase one against Ignar. Thresh is still up and available. Potential first pick? Yeah, for sure. That's why you ban Elise here uh, if you are Misfits Gaming, and I think that is the correct choice uh, to go for because Caitlyn is another potential first pick for some teams. Obviously not available this time. Zach, the same deal, which means the, the list of the normal first picks is, uh, is getting smaller and smaller. Thresh being the most uh, obvious. standard, obvious, whatever you want to call it, uh, potential first pick now. Especially when you look at Ignar uh, in terms of his play. Two times played, 2-0 and on the split, and his overall stats, one kill, two deaths, and 29 assists. That Shocker. is he did phenomenal it. play. But what do HDK do in reply? Well, now the question is if Lee Sin is going to be high value for H2K, then now that we know Max Law really wants to play it, uh, Yankos, of course, is one of the true Lee Sin legends here in Europe. Can definitely take it on his own, but we see a lot of junglers go Rek'Sai instead, or even Warwick sometimes. So yep. I, I think the jungle pool is pretty wide uh, right now with Rek'Sai being introduced into the meta, and we also see Yankos value that above the Lee Sin. All right, Che's gonna get his hands on Braum, so nothing too exciting just yet. No. Whenever you see Braum first rotation, you're kind of like boring. Like Especially because you know what that laning phase is going to look like yeah. now. And he's, he adds no no fun to the bottom lane. Other than that one all in, we see every, what, 10th game or something? So what you're saying is it's anti-fun, viewer-wise, because it's not all in, it's not kills, it's not yeah. exciting. It's not a part. Well, we'll see what Che can do in the mid to late game, where Braum does become a little more fun. A little more useful. He, he becomes does, very shake good. Your head. I'm just saying, he doesn't become, <laughs> he doesn't become <laughs> fun in the late game anyway. I love seeing Braum engages in the mid to late game. Get that Fisher down, split up teams. And then everyone just dodges it because you're hard engaged as Braum is actually pretty sucky. And then that's it. Such a buzz kill to Fisher. I'm just saying. Okay, well, Kha'Zix, not the least sin that both of us were kind of hoping for. Yep. But again, not really surprised either. No, I think Kha'Zix is also fine. I uh, always have the ability to try and look for these. 1v1s, and also it's been a very popular pick by the European junglers. Uh, H2K need a mid lane right now. Uh, Syndra would be available, but they go for the very safe AD carry choice. And that means we have every role being matched. So now the bans are always kind of up in the air. Renekton ban comes in very normally here, because again, you want to be able to blind pick something that doesn't get countered by Renekton specifically, yeah. or you ban away Renekton's counters and you then take him. Oh, well, see. there is a oh, just, one. There we go, ban that one out. I always like seeing the priorities in phase two. Uh, and then we actually often see like, uh, for, on a, for blue side, you see like mid lane last picks also being removed, or Fiora. Uh, Fiora, of course, because she's a fantastic last pick uh, on red side, but also then things like, you know, being it a illusion or a Fizz, if you want to pick a Syndra. In this case here, Misfits are just banning the Syndra. Uh, most likely setting up to just play Corky mid lane. It is Power of Evil after all. Well, it's worked out a few times for Power of Evil. Definitely one of those comfort picks. Power of Evil got the wealth of champions available to him. This meta almost feels like it was built around Power of Evil. <laughs> a lot of weird and wonderful options. And if there's slower pace, he has Cassio Piers now removed from the table as well. So what is that signal for H2K? Corky as well? Yeah, they can just take away yep. the Corky if they want to deny it. Uh, therefore, we have to then see if Power Weevil has a counter pick prepared against it. At this point, when Corky has been meta for at least a week, you definitely feel like every mid laner should have a few when, picks. When I interviewed the second best mid laner in Europe, according to Caps Nuketuck, uh, a few minutes ago, he said that Power of Evil played Cogmo into his Corky and it did very oh, well. They just ban it. And that whole discussion now goes nowhere. So we're not going to see the Cogmo Corky matchup. Lucian is open and available. Uh, is this a matchup, a comp that you could think it would fit or not really? I mean, you, you don't want to just take Lucian here. I think Rumble is a safe uh, top lane pick or you can go for the blind pick mid lane and I was Gonna look at things like Oriana as an example, but most of the standard blind picks have been removed with Corky Syndra. Uh, it is gonna be not the most exciting uh, mid lane pick from February, but 
a good one nonetheless. Well, pretty well-rounded comp from HTK already. Got some scaling, got some team fight, got some initiation. Misfits gonna round out this. Yeah, I might just get like a Talia coming in from Power of Evil. Uh, always been able to kind of match the Orianna. Or, okay, this might be a little, little bit different, a uh, little blank. Decided to swap away from it because, you know, you have two picks in a row, so it's very important which order you pick them it in is. forever. It's it very is important. And what I like about the Rumble, though, denies it from Odo, uh, but Fiora is up and available. I don't know if you want to run that into Rumble uh, or not. Odo's got a huge amount of champions available to him. There's a number of boring tanks you could play as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still thinking uh, Talia would be a good pick here, but Oriana, oh, sorry, LeBlanc can also get the job done. Now, I think uh, from my list of good picks against uh, Rumble, Camille Klett are the two I'm looking at mainly uh, as options for Oriana, and he's currently hovering that Camille. Oh, Odo Amne has played Camille as well. Let's find out what he decides to lock in. Seven seconds left. Nope, gonna be the boring tank. God damn it, HK. Gonna be the boring tank. I had Can you to pick one fun field. champion here? <laughs> All right, fine. But look, They're it's serious. well rounded. They're yes. serious. This is a try hard composition. Yeah. Something that I never quite understood why we flamed, right? I, we don't <laughs> flame it. But like you look at the other side and you see like explosive things like, oh, is that a Kha'Zix right there with their sick ass resets? Is that a LeBlanc mid lane? Is that a Thresh support? Like you see some playmaking, Trevor. And then you get Oriana Gallio on the other side. And yes, you're like, but Ooh. there is some clean possibilities. Ash Arrow into Unburrow, tags from the Brom, if anything goes a little bit awry. Ash Arrow, snipes. Heroic entrance, I mean, this is sort of quintessential H2K. Uh, control, uh, intelligence, map play. And this split, they've been trying to work on team fighting as well. I think one of the it's a good first team fighting time, comp. One of the first times in a long time I felt H2K have also shown improvement in that area. Um, especially in some of the earlier games in the splits. But that really is the most annoying part about H2K right now is whenever we feel like we see some improvements, being at Baron setups, late game team fights, then the loss of focus in some of these top tier matches just make them look super weak all of a sudden. And you kind of question everything, being like, wait a minute, did they actually improve? in terms of their late game, based on just some of those matches against like Unicorns or Love, against Fnatic, where if something goes wrong, they drop the ball. This is a good game though to show that you are in fact a good late game team right And now. whether or not they're holding that ball, Deficio, H2K taking on Misfits Gaming here in week five. It is cross group, remember? Misfits really want to uh, challenge for those top of the table spots, especially after Misfits caused that upset just a few weeks ago against Fnatic. So let's take a look at the early lane shenanigans. Shenanigans? And some of those sick uh, plays. The, the, the sick plays? The sick plays. Yeah. I don't think there was anything after <laughs> sick right there. I think it was just sick oh. plays. <laughs> I can see the regret in your eyes the moment that... Uh, it could have been worse. It could have definitely been worse. Uh, H2K, Trevor. They own the shenanigans. They are in that jungle. But did uh, Misfits spot them? I didn't quite see a couple of pings. Yep, some it. warning notices. It's all okay. Just want a bit of information. Let's look at the lanes. Let's look at the lanes here. Okay. Uh, so up top lane against Rumble. If you do see tanks, it's always Galio or Gragas. Uh, after first back, you can actually start kind of pushing the rumble back after he's uh, nerfed to the minion damage with Q. So the laning phase is fine for these tanks right now, and you just obviously become a strong team fighting pick, uh, just like the rumble in the mid lane. Uh, I feel like a matchup we've seen for like three, four years, uh -huh. almost. Obviously a little bit of rework on, on LeBlanc, but Febiven with early push on uh, on Oriana here, but. Power Weaver always kind of able to kind of look for trades back uh, if he wants it, but not going to be a lane where someone is going to kill each other. Uh, not exactly. And bot lane, actually, funny enough, it's... Similar kinda, story. kind of the same, yeah. Braum lanes just kind of try to neutralize most lanes. But uh, I want to go back to mid lane as we see some trading on screen. Ignor gets a fly onto Che. Um, Power of Evil locked in the LeBlanc. A little bit of a surprise into the Orianna, uh, in my opinion. What's, what's some of the thinking? What is LeBlanc going to bring to the table that the likes of the Talia is not, as you all were alluding to in Picks and Bands. So if you look at what Oriana brings, Oriana will always bring you strong laning phase. She's able to push, she's safe against basically everything in this lane here. So she kind of just guarantees 
mid lane pressure. What LeBlanc brings, or Italier, is the ability to leave the mid lane. It's the ability to roam away from mid lane, being able with teleport or just your, your, your mobility from distortion over like a wall into, you know, a gank. And also it brings like gank setup because you have quite a lot of CC with your chains that's fairly easy to connect with because you have distortion to jump on top of people, which means if you can't beat the Oriana by just pushing against her, because that's what she's doing well, yeah. you try and either gank her with your jungler, Karsix, and the LeBlanc, or you try and use the LeBlanc to go to other lanes with TP, with her mobility, and that's kind of how you try and play around this Oriana lane. I quite like the thinking, especially if Misfits can play the map well against HTK. Um, as the game pans out, we noticed Ignar a moment or two ago moving up into HTK's uh, right-hand quadrant, placing a ward down, and now all of a sudden, Maxwell's going to leap forward. Far of Evil distorts over the wall as well. So small little trade, little wave, high five, hi guys. And everyone returns back to uh, pretty standard laning phases. Yeah, and we're going to see that confidence in the 2v2 from Power of Evil and Max Lord during the game. Because that's one of the problems for Orianna is all your damage is obviously based on, on the ball and you moving it and then having it positioned for like a shockwave at level 6. But it's very easy as a, as a professional player to kind of dodge around that damage in these 1v1, 2v2 fights. Yeah. It's obviously much different than a late game team fight. So if you have a skirmish, Feveran, yells, shockwave, you know, and then probably flashes it. He's like, I, uh, sorry, I dealt and no then, damage. And then I yell, sombrero! Exactly, and then he dealt no damage, and suddenly Febrevan and Yankos lost that 2v2. Well, Odoamne is getting roasted in the top lane. Alfari oh, was overheating with that flame spit. Oh, Febrevan comes power. down from Power of Evil. Febby ends up uh, trading more of his HP than he was expecting. And power of Evil so far, down 6 CS. Kind of expecting the matchup at this stage. And Trevor, can you confirm there is in fact tea in this cup? There is in fact tea. Without in me putting the a tea bag in it, cup. they have learned after I messed it up last time. Yankas, he wants to kill Afari. All right, so let's find the unbarrow. This should be easy peasy, putting them pie. Afari's gonna get run down, and Yankos sinks the fangs in. That was a pretty ferocious bite for first blood. It is not the nice one. Uh, it's not the first time I've seen Alfari and all the European Rumbles uh, close his eyes, blindly push the wave, don't put a ward down, and then just get ganged and give away first blood. I feel like it's almost a tradition by European top laners right now. A ward was available and everything. Both jungles are staying top lane right now. Uh, we look at bot lane for a hook. Death Center's going to connect on Shay. Actually, in the top is the mini map is going close, but nothing happens in both lanes. That was, though, uh, probably the easiest first part of Yankos' life. Like, he walks into a lane that's pushed all the way up without any vision. And Alfari has been missing so much CS. 40 on Odo Amne. Far ahead of Alfari right now. Yeah, two and a bit waves. But every time we did look up, Alfari was trying to bully Odo Amne. Use that flame spitter, pushing him down and, and chasing. Talking about some differences, uh, Maxwell's been able to farm up a small advantage over Yankos. It's 13. In actual fact, because of the kill, he's behind in gold. And then pretty much even Stevens elsewhere. H2K just with a thousand gold lead thanks to uh, their first blood. Ivory will continue to trade out. So nothing too shocking here, Deficio. Well, I am looking at Yankos and his early uh, skill order. He's actually maxing his E. Uh, most Rek'Sai players that I see will max Q um, right now. So obviously for him, when he does get the full stacks of his Rage Bar there with the E damage, it is a bit more instant uh, burst coming in from him. But also at the same time, I think just with him and his tunnel, trying to be able to be a bit more active on the map. Well, let's see whether or not Yankos can get those Rage Bar chomps down. Trey Seeker, he was on cooldown. There we go. Yep. Yankos unable to fire it. While we've got a little bit of a, a respite, I want to take a look at Ignor down in this bottom lane, Deficio. His Thresh, uh, one of those playmaking supports, one of those frontliners, the opportunity moments. Ignor, this split on Thresh, Rakan, and Blitzcrank is 5 and 1, and he has a 15 KDA on Thresh. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is insane, and that's one of the reasons Misfits are doing well right now. The meta suits a player like Ignor. Last split, I think a lot of guys were looking at his performance and kind of questioning a little bit if he was you know, falling off towards the end, uh, because he 
obviously had to play a lot of mages, a lot of range support. And yeah. That really isn't his style. If he can play something with a lot more pick potential, a bit of tankier as well, we can play in the front line. That is kind of what suits him. But I just want to go back real quick to Yankos and his, his Emacs right now. The important thing to highlight, as I said before, with the tunnel is the cooldown on it. Because every time you do give it a, a skill up, three seconds cooldown less right. on using, obviously, the tunnel. So I think what he's trying to do here is just have a build that actually allows him to be even more active with moving around the map, setting up some of these plays, aggressive plays, against uh, Misfits. But again, I normally always see Q max. Yeah. Uh, the, the real question is, let's see how many times it becomes impactful, right? How many opportunities comes up down the bottom lane as I'm trying to waffle. That's an Ash Arrow onto Hans Summer. The exhaust is through. Some of the spells are traded. Hans Summer's going to go down. Taken out by Nuclear. Che sets his sights on Ignat. And before the passive can proc, they back away. Classic cast occurs right there. We talk a bit about Ignat, how well he's doing lately. And then his AD carry dies right next to him. Sadly, not a whole lot Ignat could have done right there. Instead, it is Hans Summer not only dying, but also using both summoners against a Galio who soon will have his TP and Yank is on this wreck side. And Nuclear and Chafe both have flashes up. So Ignai has to do a lot of duty on that Lantern. Make sure he sits in the back line. Power of Evil's looking for Yankos. The chains connect. Flash allows the route to follow. Come on, Protect comes out. The Sombrero! I said I'd call it, and I did! Maxlaw looks for Febivin. It was a good escape from PoE. Maxlaw trying to taste Febivin's fear, and there's not enough follow-up. The dash, the chain, the pop! Power of Evil yeah, with a double! The classic one, Oriana trying to help, gets into a 2v2. The ulties are almost impossible to hit this early in the game. Obviously, this one from oh. Febrin was to try and save his jungle, not exactly burst down Power Weaver where he stood. Dodge around, two guys suddenly die from H2K. Oh, damn, though, he's killing Maxlor. Uh, look at that, Maxlor gets dropped down. You know what that reminds me of? Brother Trick from MSI. A um, little bit over eager. Definitely a bit of a different situation <laughs> because I remember that example where Trick was in that brush. He saw the fed gal you walk towards and yes. he was like, do I just walk out here or do I take that fight? He took okay, the fight, to everyone. Fair, to be fair then, Maxwell got surprised. He got surprised. He got surprised. But I'm not with a good roam, as we like to say it here, where we are very positive in the ULCS. Got dunked on and that means Odo Omnet Takes the kill lead back for H2K. Gets himself that second uh, Dark Seal. Something I'm seeing, I feel a lot more. Uh, it feels like a LCS broadcast doesn't go by without some double Dark Seal nonsense going on. And again, if you at home wonder why on earth would you do that? Because I'm wondering that now. Yeah, you know, it doesn't give you the double stacks. You don't get extra bonus AP from that. But it's simply because, again, the HP region you get from your potions that is not unique, so getting two or three of them just increases that amount and you get more sustain. Let's see uh, the chase onto Yankos. Power of Evil just kind of sidestep out of that ulti from Febriven. Therefore, nothing uh, Febriven could actually do to save his jungler's life, and he died for it as well. Bot lane, though. Remember, Nuclear and Chase still have flashes, but it may not be enough. Nuclear flashes before he gets chomped down by Maxlaw. Now Che is the target. He's running for his life. Used the flash and killed by Ignar. Alfari teleported in. Got himself an assist, but if they don't get Tau first blood, I don't think that's oh, worthwhile. Oh, they should. It's just a Galio Hold that thought. Lane. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Power of Evil's running for his life. Can dash backwards. That's not going to be the best prey seeker. Yeah, he saw the too. He's like, oh, I can do that too. Let's see. Butt lane three man pushing in. Galio is getting that top lane tower as well. He's almost killing it. And who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? Butt lane got it. There we go. Okay, so now is it worth teleport for... But I yeah. mean, you got the goal from it. You guaranteed some kills, despite you obviously not really helping that much. Then you're there for support in case, because uh, Odomnus TP, I believe, were cancelled from that uh, fight before. Yankos stealing away one camp. He's getting a little bit for himself, but he's still sticking to that max E. So his tunnel cooldown right now is all the way down to uh, 12 seconds. Still uh, not insignificant, but I yeah, mean, it starts at like 26, you know, so... Chain of corruption. Yeah, so I just want to see him right now with the TP. Yeah, both double TP come in. Basically, you just want to fully commit it here as Rumble, because then you know you get kills plus tower, uh, and you want to make sure that if Galio shows up, then suddenly you don't actually end up leaving your team hanging. Because yeah. you cancel first, and you're like, whoopsie. That was very close, in fact. Uh, Odo Omne almost got that tower before Misfits did. So, 12 minutes in, Deficio. Um, even gold game. Even tower game, 
and I'm looking at the mini map. A lot of Misfits vision in the top quadrant as they've lane stopped for that tower. Yeah, and this is where life gets much better for Power of Evil as well. Gunblade completed. He's now able to kind of roam around a more open map, join his support, join his jungler, and look for these invades on H2K and, and ganking in the side lanes because this Orianna, yes, she will keep wave clearing mid, but she can't move first. So Power of Evil should always have that little advantage, be a few seconds ahead. And it's up to Feverman to just call miss every single time. And it puts a lot of pressure on everyone on H2K. Let's try to keep our eyes on how quickly Feverman does call miss the moment Power of Evil walks away. Yes, they do. you want to like I... uh, look at him when he says it? We or? can do that. I'll look at the mini map for the pings if you don't mind. Uh, but yesterday we were talking about how efficiently and effectively teams and their mid laners communicate the roam. So Power of Evil drops out of vision. Starts to back away, but I think he walked just over that control ward that H2K snuck into the banana bush. Both dual lanes, Trevor, swap to top side. One side with no flashes against Oriana, not Oriana, LeBlanc, and a pretty fit uh, or strong Kha'Zix at the moment. Makes it tricky for HK's bottom lane to sit up here. Uh, they will have to respect the engage from Ignar, because so many people could suddenly show up for Misfits. Power of Evil also feeling confident with the trace. You can take oh. a bit of damage in return now because you have sustain from your Gunblade. Wow, Power of Evil so good, he doesn't even take damage in return. That's even better, just don't take any damage. But then you're kind of wasting your item, aren't you? If there is already lifesteal <laughs> on it, you should really use that. Maximize the item. I mean, the, a, a portion of the sustain goes towards the item's net value. Exactly. So I, I Right now, there. with that trade, he did not get full value <laughs> of the item he bought. Well, there you go. That's next level I'm analysis. Just Could have stayed for one more auto, take an auto back. There Next you go. level indeed. I'm actually getting much more excited about this mid game. The map is going to slowly start to open up. H2K have got uh, tools available to stop Misfits setting up any sort of 1-3-1 or 1-4 options, depending on what teleports are available. But it also means they have to pull the trigger. They have to get those Ash Arrows down, mm -hmm. not let Power of Evil stop pushing out these side lanes and become this annoying threat. Uh, which it feels like is a yep. few minutes away. And it's always the case with Swift Pusher. He's going in this time. Once again, taking a bit of minimum see there. Got 22 HP back. Uh, good use of life still. But that's always the kind of thing when you play uh, control mages versus split pushing mages. Like, it's so hard once you fall behind to stop them in the side lane, like yeah. the LeBlanc in this case, because you can't send Oriana against her. Because then it's a long lane where you just gank the Oriana. Very easy to set up with chains. Jungle gank, whatever it is, support, and you just kill the guy. So therefore, Orianna's kind of forced to keep sitting mid, and you might just lose a lane where you can't actually defend it properly. Well, Odawamna is going to have to do double duty. He has to try hold off either Alfari or Power of Evil. Can do so on that uh, Galio. To Fisher, we're up to 15 minutes, and H2K find themselves around 600 gold down. Um, taking a look at their gold differences at 15 over the last few weeks. Definitely up and down. Did last week pretty brutal losses. But you can see why I bought into the hype, right? You look at week one and week three, especially, it's great uh, goal differences from them as a team. They look actually very strong. But yeah, week four, everything went wrong. We're gonna get a fight though, because there's a TP behind this bottle. Look at that! Flash play from Ignar up on the front line. Maxwell hits the Ash Arrow before lanterning out to safety. A heroic entrance will delay Nuclear's death, but not long enough. The Shockwave catches two, and Oda Wamne at least gets a reply back. The Rift Herald continues to help out. Initially recruited by Misfits, very good cleanse by Febivin. Now the Herald is going in <laughs> to smack Febivin in the face, and he's forced to flash away. Misfits come out winning. Two for one for Misfits. Power Beaver might not be done yet. There's no ward on Yanker's right. Actually, no, there's one to the left. He sees him. Tries to just take away Jungle Camp, but H2K committing to that fight, split up, and the flashes were not ready for Che and Nuclear. So as soon as they walk in here, they're pretty doomed. There's really no way out for them. Che just goes down instantly. Nuclear needs the help of his top laner with the ulti to try and stay alive, but obviously not enough. You're an 80 carry stuck in there. I think H2K gambled a lot by trying to actually take the fight like this with this approach coming from two different angles and no flashes in the duel. And Power Evil, oh, he's going ham. All right, he's damn blah. Jumps over. Blah, blah. Yep, I tried to recover it. There was nothing happening there. Just commit, man. Try to save Danish or something. Command Just attack Danish. and we'll do the best we can. Ignore, no flash. Flay will buy just a couple of seconds and Power of Evil on the back end. Just gets a love tap onto Febivin as Ignor drops. Golf claps from the crowd. H2K get their fifth kill of the game. They want a mid tower now. They want it so badly. All five members committing for it. I think they're going to get it as well. Ash Arrow's up in just a few seconds. So if Misfits stick around, 
H2K have got some additional engage tools. Damn, this game is going to be so close right now because uh, it was actually looking so good for Misfits with 2-0 LeBlanc. They were just kind of played slow, not actually lose a member randomly around the mid lane. But then suddenly uh, H2K with that one kill into a tower get a small advantage in terms of cool. Power Evil TP top lane, uh, that is what I call a temple teleport. Okay. It's actually not a thing in League of Legends, but I just invented it right now. It's when you TP in for the minion push. Well, let's see if it gets uh, any additional advantage, because Nuclear and Che are already responding. So the tempo TP, see, now gonna bounce off. he pushed in fast, forced Nuclear and Che to defend, allowed his team to start the Rift Held. Tempo TP. Tempo TP, there we go. Catchphrase it, hashtag trademark. Um, I want to quickly go back to that 15-minute goal difference because you bought into the H2K hype, weeks one, two, and three. I did. Uh, their average goal difference was actually second only behind Fnatic. See? And then Fnatic crushed them and destroyed the goal difference. They did. But it's just one of those things that <sighs> H2K have to bounce back from. But it's a bit like last bit, right, Trevor, where after the regular season, we were looking at H2K going into play of playing Fnatic, and we were like, man, H2K, they are pretty solid, Fnatic. Yep. You know, this playstyle, we weren't too sure whispers, about it. There was whispers they might be finalist contenders. And that's Back what then. some of the players were talking about. I'm obviously putting all the blame here on the players. And then suddenly, HK in that best of five, they lost 3-0 and yeah. looked really bad, honestly. Uh, everything went wrong for them. So it's just been a few moments here this year with this lineup where we have been burned a little bit, which is why we are hesitating. Now, now we're hesitating. Now, now we're hesitating. But H2K what can... What is it, like, fool me once, shame on you, fool yep. me twice, shame, shame on, on me. me. Uh, there is a third one step, but I don't know how it goes. Um, uh, fool me ten times H2K, I guess still shame on me, but yep. I'm still, still buying into it, number 11. Still keep believing. Uh, what do H2K have to do? What are their win conditions with the comp now? We're very clearly trading blow for blow. Uh, even game, open map. Yep. And H2K, does it just come down to Ash Arrows? Well, no, because with H2K, like what we like to call that comp is, is the 1-4, uh, where you have one guy who's actually like a dedicated split pusher. It is the Galio because he has teleport. Uh, so he's just sitting the whole man side lane. And then you normally want to use your AD carry and support in the other side lane to try and push that down, while Febivan, as an Orianna, just wave clears the mid lane. And while it's not ideal... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Slow jump in. Wait, 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 wait. What on earth was that? That was the worst play I've ever seen. I do not understand. We got a slow-mo replay of that. That was a misclick. I can almost guarantee everyone that was a misclick. <laughs> Well, Max Law potentially misclicking That's costs <laughs> his life and Ignar's life thanks to the Rift Herald. And they you don't know, even get the tower. You know people right now are going to take the clip of him saying best jungler in Europe. And then they're going to run it right into that little jump and they're going to keep running it together. Oh man, I feel bad for him because that was definitely not intended. No. Nope. We will probably, we will, wow. Why are you speaking so much Danish? I have no idea. All right, so no minions, guys. Nope. Nah, there's nothing to say. That's it's a mistake. He wants to jump what? the other way, and then Mouse was on the other side. I wonder if we can get a reaction shot. Yeah, we can. Yep. Goof. I was looking. I was trying to lip read, but there was no words. There was no words. I think to he said follow up that play. I think he said beep. Yeah, something that's, like that. I mean, that's sort of what it sounded like to us. So, Deficio, what does this mean for H2K? They get a free tower. They defend their mid. <laughs> and they thwart uh, the Rift Herald play? I mean, the setup for them is like the way to kind of play out the game is still somewhat the same, but, but now with Baron alive and you having a, a bit of a cold advantage, you can actually very easily just play around pushing mid and then trying to go in and get vision around Baron. Uh, because then Baron becomes your main objective because you don't again, you don't have a split push comp. Yeah. The reason you send the Ash Bomb to the side lane is just because someone needs to be there to maximize farm in three lanes and actually push the lane forward. You can see Ash Bomb on the way to top now. And they have to go together because Ash alone will just die to LeBlanc. So when you put the support with her, you get a 2v1, you can push the lane out, and then you can roam these guys into the mid lane, join Febivan, and have a strong four-man group. That's why it's a 1-4, because your objective is always to be four together. Well, it's just so many extra steps that H2K cannot afford to miss out on. Yeah, and that's... Tempo has to be that right, the lanes have to be right. I mean, it's a lot of small things, right? But if you actually do manage to push out this top lane right now, you can then walk in, get vision on Baron, and then you can try and force a fight in a few minutes around Baron, where you are five-man together, which is what your composition excels at being the five-man team fighting unit. All right, Che's gonna get caught up by these chains here. Power of Evil 
Manages to get away from the present. Ash Arrow gonna get distorted away from. Yankos continues to chase. Tags with the Prey Seeker, waiting for the Void Rush. The Sombrero once again! And Ignar's in range to save Power of Evil. All right, Fabian confirmed. Not Faker with that range on his ulties from Oriana. <laughs> but I'm not trying to hold mid tower, but that's very low. And now because HK invested four guys to try and kill one guy in the top lane, they lose mid lane tower. Well, that means Misfits eventually get that objective. And that's going to allow them to rotate around. Yankos flashed for the knockup on that unbarrow with his maxed E and was unable to find it. So that means he's going to back away. Going to be flashless if any other, uh, you know, fights or skirmishes break out. And uh, it just, it feels like the Baron game is going to start. And this is actually exciting for me, Deficio, because Misfits and HDK have had some of the most talked about Baron setups, plays, throws, you name it, all year long. So, yeah, basically, uh Last split, and I would even say last year, it became a bit of a joke with the H2K Barons and the H2K late games because they would lose so many games around that Baron by making a big mistake, die, give over Baron. And Misfits, it was actually the other way around because in Spring Split, we were hyping up the beautiful Baron setups. And just when we kind of peaked with the hype, they started just losing Barons 50-50 <laughs> yes. smites left and right. We were like, wait a minute, what's happening here? I, I also want to add on to that H2K point about them throwing for Barons. The only team that comes to mind that is maybe more famous for that mistake is Dignitas. Yes. So while Dignitas are the gold standard in Baron throws, H2K would take the silver medal uh, because it ran for a very long time. And unfortunately, it happened again. It happened against UOL. They had a lead uh, that should have been a series. They should have won. Series, yeah. And that Baron throw. So, let's see what happens this time around. That's a clone. Oh, hits the clone. I was about to jump and then realized with the animation and the colors. So, H2K's Ash Arrow fizzles. And at 24 minutes, it's now just this pressure game. Look at the bots. Misfits have got minions pushing towards H2K. And Misfits are grouped as five. But you can once again see how H2K, whenever they have a chance to send four men to the mid lane, they will do it. Uh, Power Beaver is in here right now trying to poke, but normally he wants to be actually sit in the top lane. Uh, another option though for Misfits is actually sending... Oh, Whoa, that's baby! That's a great flay! And that's exactly why Ignar likes Thresh. Max Lord this time round finds the right leap. He void rushes, goes invisible, dashes away. Power of Evil's running down Febivin. Not gonna catch with the shockwave. Oda Omni arrives to watch his team die. Outplayed right there. Ignar starts the whole thing, interrupts Yankos with his tunnel right there. And then instant engage from Hansama after. H2K just lost four members. That is Baron gone. And I guess you can't throw it, Baron, if you just die before it. Ignar, you beauty. Five and one this split when playing Blitzcrank, Thresh, and Rakan. And look at this flay. I mean, this is such a good flay right there. Yanko's trying to tunnel over the wall, gets completely interrupted by Ignar. And then Hansama as well with the ulti. He sees three guys from H2K trying to somewhat save the situation. Why? Why you try to save the guy? He's already gone. Instantly, just try and back away, and then maybe you can still try and save the Baron. But as soon as you start walking forward and then stay, Hansama just sees the opening. Didn't even have to flash for it. No. Nope. He just shot ulti straight at them, hit three guys. That's a setup for Misfits. That's a Baron. And that means Misfits take a 3,000 gold lead at 25 minutes. They get an uncontested Baron, and now we can see this 1 3 1 with teleports, mind you. Oh. Fully activated. Good luck, Oriana. Good luck, Galio clearing out those Baron Empowered minions. So again, if Misfits are pushing straight for one tower, there's still decent wave clear on the side of H2K, but it's the fact that three lanes are pushing at you at the same time. So if you're not in one of the lanes to defend, one champion plus Baron buff minions will take that tower down very quickly. I want to go back to that Ignore play, those mobility boots, the flay just, just interrupting Yankos, and something you mentioned earlier, Deficio, Misfits, this meta suits them. You've got Ignar on comfort playmaking champions on the front line. Yep. Max Law, comfortable playmaker on the front line. PoE can play whatever he wants and be versatile and helpful. And Ofari's unlocked as well. So literally every team member gets a buff in some way or another. That's what I like about Ofari. As long as he doesn't have to play a tank, he's unlocked. Like give him any sort of carry, AP carry, AD carry. Like he can play those champions very well. The tanks are just where he's a bit shaky still. So the fact that we don't just have tanks top, like we saw for Summer Spring Split, is extremely good for him uh, and the rest of Misfits. 
They are sieging on this mid tower, but as we said before here, you need one guy who's left alone. Well, that guy is sitting top lane right now. That is the LeBlanc with the minions, and this tower is now almost dead. That is indeed going to get chunked down in the next wave, most likely. Uh, Power Reveal is not sticking around, so we'll need a couple extra minion waves before this gets taken out. And we talked a lot about the team of Misfits, but Max Law is the other guy with a lot of eyes on him. Not only because he's got he's made some big statements, but also what is the maximum potential of Misfits? Power of Evil's gonna find Yankos and pretty easily escape. He's got Flash, he's got Ulti, and yeah, same question. What is the maximum potential? Max Law replaced Kakao because they said he would have high potential. Yeah, and I think uh, all of us, we kind of looked at that change and said, you know what, this makes perfect sense. Uh, I, I don't know a single one uh, of the casters who before the split were kind of like, oh, that's weird. You know, Kakao was super good for the old Spring Splitter because Kakao fell off. Halfway through Spring Split, he just kind of dropped off. He could no longer just pick Lee Sin every game. And he never seemed to have synergy with the team. Yeah. So I think actually the change was just very smart. And the fact that Maxwell was available as a vocal member, as a guy who can help shot calling, made him a great pickup for, for Misfits. And they did it actually almost instantly as the offseason started. Yeah, and week one, we were nervous, uh, losing the first series of the splits for yeah, Misfits. Yeah, and that, it looked bad. It looked really bad. <laughs> and we were like, oh, this was not the right thing to do. Uh, only then for Misfits to now be in a four series winning streak. Uh, just before we talk about the exchanges here, the observers did highlight Febivin's shockwave in that top lane. It fizzled. I didn't see if it was for POE or just to try and clear out the minions. I, I didn't see the build up. The point is, it was used, it's on cooldown. And now H2K will not have that available for a little while. And people might wonder, based on what we talked about, with how to play like H2K's uh, compi in the mid game, you know, with the AD carry support pushing out, trying to set up for Baron. Like, if, if that, is it too passive, you know? Is it just not a good enough comp to play? But it is a very strong team fighting comp. And kind of, the thing is, you rely on not making massive mistakes in the early to mid game with these kind of scaling comps. Uh, and then when you get caught at that Baron area and you lose four guys and lose the Baron, well then suddenly it was way too easy for Misfits to get Baron. It was supposed to be a long grind of split pushing into vision, into like creating a pick and then maybe getting the Baron. Could have taken five, six, seven minutes, which would have given H2K a lot of time to keep scaling. But when that instant pick happens, the game just snowballs so quickly and then this team fighting scale and comp just suddenly loses almost all its value because that objective you were supposed to defend around yeah. for a long time is no longer there. And now Misfits, they need to make a mistake to allow this gold lead and the control they have to bring H2K back into it. Alternatively, H2K can look for some picks or some outplays. Power of Evil runs away from Che there. A good thing for H2K though is the fact that Febivan is still picking up a lot of farm. Like he's sitting on two and a half items now, almost completing his death cap which of course gonna be a big spike for him in damage. Depending on how much he has when he goes back, could also just fully go void stuff and sit on the last rod, but they actually do get an arrow. Maxwell's looking for the lantern and he finds it. Dark passage to safety. Spell name I don't say super often. I like lantern. Yeah. Simple, clean, easy to understand. Everyone gets it. All right, Chase gonna get caught out. Takes a lot of damage before he puts down the half, Christmas half anyway. Locks out a lot of damage, and that Baron buff, it only unlocked the top tower to Fischio. Mid inner and bottom inner are still under threat, as you can see how far he's shoving it in, but Misfits have strangled H2K off the map. But it, the fact that they didn't get more is still a little hope uh, here for H2K, because their comp is still looking good when it comes to these big team fights, as we keep highlighting. And so often when I see Orianna in, in games, I'm always like, let her get three items, and then have one team fight where she nails the ulti, and then it doesn't matter your 5k gold down, yeah. because then that might actually be enough for you to win that fight. Uh, second uh, tempo TP from Power Weevil, <laughs> right back to pushing. Uh, hey, listen, um, I gotta talk to you about the tempo dragon that happened a few minutes ago. Oh, someone actually killed the dragon in this yeah. game. Yeah, 28 minutes and 57 seconds into the game. No time for Cloud Drakes here in Europe. I know, and it's your fault. I hold you single-handedly accountable for dragging, and I'm proud of it. dragging the name of Cloud Drake through the dirt. I am okay? proud of it. Well, that Tempo Dragon went to H2K. They've got some late game insurance to Fisher. By having a Cloud Drake? Yes, they do. It's one extra Drake that misfits. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. scales. They're winning on Drakes, boys. <laughs> Objective control. Let's see whether or not it actually helps them out. 
as H2K are now grouping up around Baron. 10 seconds till it comes up. Fevervin's got himself a Rabadon's death cap. It doesn't matter well, look if for you that cannot shock wave. hit a shockwave. Fair, but if you've been missing a few, at some point you got to hit it. It's yeah, like, I mean, statistically speaking. Right, it's like crit in this game, you know. If you don't get a few crits at some point, you know, bigger, bigger, bigger chance and you will get that crit. I'm sure it's the same way with Oriana shockwaves. Well, is it the plus 350 LP shockwave nowadays as ELO is going to be less relevant? Let's find out. Nuclear. 350 OP. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to pick a random number. 3,000 uh, No, because you can't say 3,000 ELO and, like, who has 3,000 LP? I don't know. Yeah, nor do so I. There's a lot of OP. It is. Uh, just, I felt like 350 is more believable. Back in the day, th you know, 3,000 mm. uh, ELO was believable. This, but there's probably many viewers that don't even know what ELO is. Yeah. There's a lot old of players school. that... They won't even know Pharrell and Lord. That, exactly. Old school names. Yeah, some old school names indeed. Who's We've been around for two Who was that guy that used to trackball? Um, I always bring him up again. Who, who? Curb. Oh, Curb! Damn you, dude. You're always going to bring him up. There was a dude who played professionally. Don't say it again. We already used it. We used this one last split and it banged. People liked it. Once a split, man. I don't know if that's true because we didn't use it for like two years. To keep the memory alive. I really saved that for last split and used it and now you used it again. So I feel kind of betrayed. Okay, well, I'll, I'll bring it to a topic you do like. Uh, Baron setups. Misfits are trying to push Vision into H2K's jungle. A little bit shallow for now. Uh, let's start talking about the steps. Push mid lane, get deep vision. What happens next? Because you had a nine step plan. Well, you, uh, you got to go back to pushing mid again. That's actually step number three. And then step number four is that you can then start going back into that jungle you've warded up and you can look for that little pick when the enemy team has no vision around you or you can ideally start the Baron as well and force him to come in and face check you and you can then engage flank from Leblanc, Rumble ulti in these little narrow corners here in the jungle. Power Vivo, he's uh, hiding topside and HK they're kind of spread thin trying to defend but they're still staying around Baron which is enough to actually keep Misfits back so we're going further and further into this game which is only good for H2K. Oof. It is good for H2K and nerve-wracking for Misfits and Power of Evil. Yeah, because he's going to clear out this Baron vision. And right there, uh, the, the last few steps from Misfits were kind of abandoned. They decided to reset the map instead of actually trying to start the Baron to force a fight or create that little engage in the jungle. And this means now H2K get a bit of breathing room again. And we kind of back to uh, the little Baron dance. Well, let's quickly look at the items before this fight breaks out. Alfaria, slightly different rumble build. Banshee's Veil, uh, Leandri's Void Staff. Mid lane is this sort of on hit uh, Lich Bane Void Staff Gunblade. Where's the Nash's Tooth? Well, not there yet. That was Oriana, remember? Um, Gargoyle Stoneplate for Odo in the top lane. Deathcap, Banshee's for Febivin. So a lot of power continues to grow. Oh, Deficio. How many deaths does Power of Evil have? Zero. Do you know why that's important? Uh, because he has died every game uh, for like 45 games in a row. Not that many. I, I think you're flaming him a little bit. Okay? Oh, I, I was... 37 games that's in a close. row. Power of Evil has given up at least one death. Last week, Stress and I talked about if you are playing against Power of Evil in Fantasy, he's guaranteed to give you a minimum of two points. He is not given that guaranteed two points. And this might be his first deathless game. Wait for that late game team in fight. 37. Cast a curse initiated. So Febben is still getting all the farm. He's taking jungle camps, he's taking side lane farm, he's getting extremely fed on his Oriana. And Misfits right now, they're skipping all the steps. Don't even want to push mid lane first. Don't even want to get deep vision. They just walk straight in, try to start the Baron because they saw Febben on the bottom side and they were hoping that Febben, for some reason, would stay bot lane, and therefore HK couldn't fight. But obviously, HK just walked straight back, yeah. uh, forced Misfits away from it. So right now, it's, it's, it's actually really hard to set up a clean Baron this late in the game. And you oftentimes just have to try and take a 5-on-5 five five team fight or get that one single pick first that requires the enemy team to make a mistake. Oh, it's so difficult. Misfits kind of need H2K to be out of position for them to set up a pick with Power of Evil flank or Ignore Engage. H2K, on the other hand, this gold deficit no longer matters. And they have an ash arrow for engage, for pick potential. So there is much more. 2,400 gold on Febivan right now. Uh, greedy farmer. And uh, if, if he gets a void stuff before the next fight, then he's hitting a massive spike for himself. How far he's trapped in the pit. Oh, they can actually force his flash maybe. Can indeed. Gonna need to run. Yankos could flash on Burrow, decides not to. 
So all of that How additional is there? cooldown. Don't How know. did Afari end in the pit randomly? Don't know. Wanted to challenge for Lord of the Pit, maybe? There was no one there. He could be the Lord at that time. I guess for a moment, but what's the fun in being a Lord of nothing? Well, I don't know. There's a question. That means Alfari is now flashless. We've got this tense build-up around Baron, where a team either engages and flops, or an unforced error can happen. That's where a team makes an outplay. And with Oda Wamne picking himself up the locket to go with the Goggle Stone Plate, reminder this is 7.12. It's freaking OP. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's super good if you happen to get the three enemies around you and you use your Goggle Stone Plate into then clicking the locket, getting multiple of your teammates with the shield. That very rarely happens. Like, I will agree, in a perfect situation where you get all of it, it's insane, you get so much extra HP from the locket due to the bonus HP of it, obviously. Level 18, 36%, I believe the increase yep. is. However, most of the time, if you are near three enemies with your Gaga Stoneblade, you do not have a lot of allies around you to get the shield from the locket as well. But maybe in this game it can happen. Well, let's find out. Everybody's in this middle lane. Alfari is coming up from the mid lane Turning around with Ignop. POE goes back up for a tempo wave push. <laughs> it is also the, the rumble counter, though. This uh, locket coming in from Oramna, because it will negate most of the damage from Afari. And look, guys, H2K suddenly with the control. They're the ones pushing mid. They're the ones going to Baron. They want to get the 5 on 5 team fight. I am still predicting that four, at least four man shockwave from Febriven to decide right. a team fight. Oh, they find the clone Shiro again. Shiro caught the clone. Ignar caught Yankos, but there is no more follow-up. I like to play from oh. uh, Power Beaver with the clone right there. Twice he's doing it, or done it. Still looking for the big fight for HK. It's, it's not quite Fnatic versus Splice yesterday in terms of low action, but we have had a long moment now of yeah. no one killing each other. What I do like is Misfits are trying to play this map. Power of Evil is fully committed to top lane split push. It's been 15 minutes since the last kill. So, yeah, but the reason the, the late game top lane split push uh, as, as a LeBlanc is very hard to use is you are pushing into this lane to then ideally walk down to try and get like a flank maybe on the enemy uh, team if they're trying to like set up a banner. The problem is uh, late game, most members are tanky enough that you don't just instantly one shot them. Uh, so, and also if you walk into the enemy jungle blind, you might just die and get caught and, you yeah. know, then you lose the whole yep. game. So Power Weaver has to kind of walk back through the same lane he just pushed into the river, which means H2K are not really afraid of him showing up behind them. You can see right there, he just walks back down. He's like either recalls going into the river and he just kind of teams up. And all he's doing is just kind of pushing down the wave to force H2K to send someone to defend it. Well, nuclear, by the way, you're talking about people being popped. He's finished off that more of Mamortius. Got the Phantom Dancer, Hurricane, Blade, the Rune King, Control Ward as well. Happy to see that. And uh, H2K at 40 minutes. Third yes, tempo TV. They TV. are down 4,000 gold. I don't even think this counts as a tempo TP. He hasn't yeah, because he's wave. right back on the map, though. This is just a normal TP. No, it's just get straight back so he can okay. make a play faster. I think you are diluting the term tempo. I am definitely not. To Fischio, as the line of control right. from Misfits is Someone in the river. Take Ash a fight. Arrow is possible. Death Sentence catches Oda Wam. Their nuclear's waiting on the trigger. Febivin Shockwave needs to hit. Look at the damage. Just Ignar or Che, rather, gets pulled backwards. There is nothing to speak of. H2K back away. The only thing that was used, Chain of Corruption, as well as the Equalizer. So Power of Evil had prepped that top lane wave before. He was looking to go towards it, but H2K around the Baron. In case someone from misses recalls, oh. they might be able to rush it down, but they're starting it now. There's so much pressure. There's no Round number two from Afari or Hans Sama. They get the flay and the death sentence. Hawk shot will pop some vision. Nuclear got that enchanted crystal arrow. Max Law, can he steal the Baron? 3,500 HP as H2K peel away. It's not a Baron throw yet as Baron has regen. Misfits are now split up and on the wrong side of the map. Alfari's gonna get run down and Deficio. Alfari and Ignar the targets. A justice punch is interrupted oh, by the flay. Alfari gets caught out and the H2K just go back to Baron. Well, yeah, they should because now 60 seconds on Alfari. Power Vivo sitting top lane with that big wave he was prepping before. But if he wants to stop this one, he has to move down to try and help Max Lore. Can Max Lore be the hero that Oh, that ward is outside the brush. That ward is outside. 
That one is also outside. Maxwell's now been spotted. He's using that Void Assault Invisible. Gonna jump in. Let's see if the steal can happen. 2,000 hit points. Oh, shockwave! Wave! Featherman makes it count, but the Baron is picked up by Yankos and H2K at the cost of an inhibitor. So they get the Baron. It is worth it. It doesn't matter if they lose this top in there for it. They might even be able to chase down Power of Evil. I think they've saved it. Power of Evil gets interrupted. There's the Glacial Fisher. That's the engage I was looking for, Deficio. 42 minutes into the game. And the minions, they're not killed. H2K, why? <laughs> why? They don't need it. It doesn't matter, Trevor. They got the Baron. They got the kills. That's the important part for H2K. They're running straight down mid. 45 seconds on Power of Evil. Mid lane. Inhib should go down right here. And H2K have no other waves pushing. And there's also Tier 1 bot lane tower laughing at them at this point. But... They just need that mid lane uh, tower for now. All right, that will be the objective. 30 seconds, 13 seconds, Misfits in a 3v5. This will be an easy objective secure for H2K. What else is available to them? Ooh, no. Back away in bot lane, maybe. Well, right, let's see. They're actually pushing for more. Max Light is alive, so it's 4v5 for two turrets. They're going straight for it. Equalizer down onto H2K. The Electro Harpoon tags Che and H2K. Okay, that was... Back away yeah. to live and fight another day. As Max Lord decides to stay, I'm running out of rhymes. Oda one there's gonna get caught up. The box goes down. Death sentence pulls him back Hit out. Play. Look how beefy that man is. Gonna get the taunt down once again. Here comes Power of Evil. Another chain, another chain. This time it misses. Justice punch to safety. And Che puts up the unbreakable. Oduwamne, unkillable for now. H2K still under some threat. Oh no! Death sentence catches down. And they no! also Sombrero! That's going to cost you LP. Misfits now have a 50-second advantage in a 5v4. Nuclear's Ash Arrow's on cooldown, and Elder Drake may be the only objective they can secure. Oh, so in the end, H2K actually lose a member. Elder Drake being started right now. Odamna, no teleport. He's sitting top lane, killing those super minions, and H2K now have to give up this Elder Drake, despite them being the team pushing now, getting mid in here. They then went for the Nexus. 4v5 with two turrets still alive. And that now cost him Elder Drake. Will that be enough for Misfits to reclaim control? They're still gonna deal with Baron Empowered Minions. It's supers in both lanes. And as you see on that drop down, H2K's longest game of summer. Truthfully, no clear indicator as to who's gonna be able to win yet. Oh, so we got in him down on both sides, but again, the big buff on the side of uh, Power of Evil and Misfits. I have to remember though, the buff is not that big, seeing as it's just one Drake for <laughs> Misfits Gaming, one Drake for H2K. So Elder Drake is a little bit of a tease in this game, but of course it's still valuable. Uh, I do see an adaptive helmet on uh, Yankos. Whenever I see that item, I just get a little bit triggered instantly, but then I have to look Flame at the other spinner, team. man. Yeah, no, but I have to look at the other team then to decide if it's okay. And you are against the Rumble, so I can accept it. Ooh. Uh, I've seen it against a lot of other stuff, worse. but hate it. Yeah. Alfari equalizes available to him if a bigger fight breaks out. But actually, I'm pleasantly surprised by that. Power of Evil chunked down a little more of Odo's health than I thought he would. He does again have a small extra buff right there. Yes, indeed. Helps out. Okay. And of course, a lot of penetration with his build. So we've reset the map, it <laughs> yeah. feels like. And we're still kind of looking for, the, for that same massive 5 on 5 team fight there where now the bases are fairly open. So if you do win it, you often will be able to push in with whatever super minion lane you have and try and actually close out the game. Well, look at the zoom out here from the observers, highlighting some of the vision that Power of Evil's working with. And if you look at the mini map, littered around this quadrant. So Misfits, really, really comfortable and capable playing in this half of the map. H2K not willing to contest mid inner. Oh, a big wave top coming as well with the super minions. So right now, H2K is spread very thin. Suddenly, losing that top lane in hip hurts them way more than it was supposed to. Yeah, exactly. H2K needed to kill those minions. That's what Misfits will be calling them. Remember, Nuclear and Che are in the top lane. So Misfits have a numbers advantage, and they'll be able to knock over their seventh tower from H2K. And this game, once again, is just balancing on a knife edge. One player will get caught or out of position, and that will determine this game. It or, feels or Positive Deficio, uh, who is the cousin of Disappointed Dad Deficio, says that one player will make the big play that wins the game for his team. 
Place your bets, Trevor. One guy. You can pick one guy on each side. One guy on each side. Okay. Uh, I think... I think Max Law on Misfits. I'm going to say Ignar on Misfits. You do that. And I'm going to say Nuclear on HTK. We'll find the Ash Arrow. And I'm going Febivan on the side of and HTK. Are we allowed to split, like, you know, hedge our bets here? So... Yeah. We a vote on both sides? Yeah, yeah. Okay, which one's more likely? Mm. HTK or Misfits to find that magic moment? In this game, with Galio and Ori Oriana, I'm saying H2K. Well, there we go. The cousin of Disappointed Dad is Positive Papa Deficio. And he has Ooh, voted like with H2K. Let's see who it, makes it. It's a, a soft vote, but... Inhibitors respawned in the top lane. Misfits will come back up in around 30 to 40 seconds. And Power of Evil is doing his best profit impersonation, leaving his team alone and playing the side lane for as long as possible, because that's what his comp has to do. Oh, he's trying to get a few hits on it. So right now, Max Lore is around, but so is Yankus as well. Um, H2K, they want to really engage and get the 5 on 5. Power of Evil are fine playing this quick push game, as you highlighted, Trevor. Baron is not alive yet. That's kind of the thing H2K is waiting for as well. They can't really force Power of Evil away unless Baron is there for them to actually set up as a fight. Yeah, but look at the vision from H2K. Inside the blue buff jungle of Misfits, Three wards, one of them will just time out. Uh, no, I'll take it back, that's a blue trinket. But there's options here for H2K if Oda wants to get in from behind. You guys want to know some super useless information at Tell this me. point? If you look at the minimap, uh, blue, uh, blue trinkets on the blue side, they will actually turn upside down, the ward animation. But on red side, the ward looks exactly like a normal ward, the blue <laughs> trinket one. It's actually really confusing when you look at it and you're like, oh, this must be a blue trinket, because normally, again, it's turned upside. upside oh, it must down. be a normal trinket, because it's not turned upside down. But that is the case on red side. I want someone to place a blue trinket on blue side. And you well, guys there's see two it. available. Place one of them. We'll do the best uh, we can to keep an eye on that. As Odo is getting run down, look at the damage from Power of Evil. He's going to get down that taunt as Power of Evil connects with another chain and is continuing to apply pressure onto Oduwamne. And now Baron's alive, though. Nuclear is starting it straight away. They want to force Pavil to teleport. Well, this is the weirdest side lane fight I've seen in oh, a while. Pavil is Power low now. Gets taunted, almost taken out. Forced to flash for his life. Gets a chain down, has that life steal, getting maximum itemization value. That'll make positive Papa Fischio proud. Misfits in a four on four in the top lane. Teleports have not started yet. Let's see what happens here. Yangus is still at the Baron. He's actually tunneling out. They're looking for the fight. That's the fight indeed. Fari gets the equalizer down, goes golden. Max Lord jumps onto Febivan in the back end as Odo's trying to do the best he can. That's two misfits down, a double kill for Nuclear. Power of Evil still pushing though, he's in the bottom lane. He got some minions still, he's going for the base. But at what cost? Misfits are running for their lives in the mid lane. Jump there, that's a shutdown as Hunt Summer's taken out. Here comes Febivan, eats a chain to the face, but this super's now bottom lane. It's almost impossible to win through split push against the Baron recall right now. Power he wants a kill to kill Febivan. Oh, Febivan. Well, I didn't even see where that burst came from. I guess Febivan killed him instead. And that's going to be game. H2K flip everything on its head. And at 50 minutes, managed to withhold. Look at the smiles on H2K's faces. They drop down Nexus Torrent number two, turn to the Nexus, and strike first against Misfits. And Trevor, you said nuclear as your man to watch. He landed the arrow, he got a double kill in the Baron fight. I will give you that one. We actually didn't even see the Fibberman shockwave in the fight because he wasn't in position to use it. But it didn't matter because he went back to base, defended. Yep. I even said that Power V was looking for a kill to kill Fibberman. The double kill combo, that's, I guess. Hey, that's what you need. I guess that is what, it, what, we, what he needs. You but, always need to kill to kill. But Febivan ended up actually taking down Power of Evil and Misfits, some good moments in the early to mid game. Got that first Baron. We were kind of like, oh, this is actually looking pretty decent. But yep. they didn't get enough with it. And then we got to that late game stage of H2K's Kong. Man, it's such an, an interesting game because there's so many elements that you can talk about and focus and, and break down because both teams had. Good moments in the early game, good moments in the mid game, good moments in the late game. And it just all comes down to that final, final decision. Ah. And, and look, huge kudos to Oda Wamne. Oda Wamne getting that taunt onto Febby under tower, uh, Power of Evil under mm -hmm. tower. Power of Evil takes that damage. It means he keeps him there. It allows HTK to engage more confidently. Like, just huge pivotal moments. Yeah, HTK definitely had uh, two good fights around Baron in, in this late game here. A little bit more 
you know, calm collective uh, compared to what we saw yep. last week uh, from them. But again, it was looking super difficult. I think Misfits uh, will we'll look back at this game and say, man, we had it all. You know, we got that Baron, we had the advantage, but then they started skipping a lot of steps. And they suddenly didn't actually create any picks at all or even get to force a Baron fight. They did not, to Fischio. One other thing, magical thing happened this game. Power Evil died. For the 38th time in a row, thanks to H2K, they came out on top after a close fight in game one. Shocks and the guys ready to break it all down. Well, quick shot, as you will see at the end of our analysis block, that death might have been the central one that sealed the deal against the Misfits. <laughs> but as you guys rightfully say, it was a very back and forth game to a point where Misfits gave everything away. We do want to start in the beginning of the game. Uh, Yamato, you talked a lot about how HUK is a team that if they get an advantage, they can get off to a great start or they can get a bad start or they want to make up for something that went bad and kind of throw it all in the different direction. And that's, we saw both of those things in the early game. We're going to start by something that we're used to seeing. A first blood from Yankov. Well, this is kind of a classic. Like in yeah. this case, Kha'Zix has a jungle matchup where he can't really fight jungles in the early game because of the matchup. But with the pushing wave, Kha'Zix needs to be here. I think he could have based earlier, not done his golems if I think that was his clear and they could have actually fought for this. Great yeah. start. And then the fight happens in the bottom lane. Yankos goes aggressively into the enemy red buff. And that's kind of the problem at this point with Paravival being able to roam out of lane, had the push ever so slightly in the middle lane, just, just enough to be able to roam out. And this is what started Misfits feeling so confident about this LeBlanc. Pick. This is where Power of Evil starts going, okay, I'm strong enough, I can start playing out on the side lanes a whole lot longer just from these first two kills of the game. It's like while the goal values were pretty similar throughout the game, the focus central goal on the LeBlanc is very, very important because throughout the game, she's going to be the split push force no one can contend with. Uh, even Galio is not going to do anything against the LeBlanc and that is like a very big kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, Big three point, what, what is info. this? Winning, winning, winning condition? Win, win, win of condition, course, we've yes. never said that. <laughs> win condition. So I want to pause just to highlight something that was on the graphic before we get into our next mm -hmm. replay. Uh, Power of Evil's kill percentage, 36%. He is rank one normally for kill participation uh, at 79% normally. For this mids? Is for mids. There's a significant drop off here for Power of Evil and that has influence later on in the game that we will end up seeing. But another thing that went, H uh, went Misfits way was when they find a team fight in the jungle. And and Ignar. Uh, yeah, and Ignar just with a great setup here as we look into our second replay uh, of what was a, a long setup. This was beautiful flay onto Yankos. Mid priority has been obtained by Misfits, which means Yankos is just a little too far out, a little too riskily played. And then it's just an easy cleanup for the rest of Misfits. And this is where they look very strong is in these team fighting sections when they have the lead early on. Then they end up splitting up yeah. afterwards. So, Yamato Cannon, you said the LeBlanc has all the gold value, the LeBlanc has all the power, can go into the side lanes. When they fight here in the stage of the game, Misfits can still very handily win the fights. They can get a Baron even. They are so well set up. So what was their downfall in the end? So, like, looking at the win conditions of both teams, H2K have this death ball composition. Like, in this case, in this replay where Jankos got caught, the problem was that they're not grouping four as mid and just taking mid priority. When they lose mid priority, they have to just take a step back and take it back. And looking at Misfits' side, they have a Fed the long that just needs to go bot lane. Baron is the objective. I haven't seen her bot lane. <laughs> <laughs> like LeBlanc was using her TP to get waves. Instead of just going bot lane, she could take the inhib alone because the enemy team has this composition that just has to run it down mid and force Nasher. You have a situation with Rumble, enemy team has to force Nasher while LeBlanc is taking your base. You have a free win pretty much. But LeBlanc kept using her TP, kept going top lane. So the death ball composition, all it had to do was push mid, go into Baron area and LeBlanc can't push because the enemy team is right there. Yeah, sounds pretty simple. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look at what actually happened and how Misfits decided to play it out. And of course, we don't know where this call comes from, but HUK, they get priority around Baron and they're in a very good position. Yeah, at this point, HUK know they have a, a good setup here because they cleared a lot of the vision. Misfits don't necessarily have the most amount of pressure off a neutral bottom lane that you were talking about. And then they had vision on Power of Evil. They push him away and Odo Omni, it, maybe it's a little early in the fight. If Misfits commit to the damage, maybe they burst him down. But this is a Galio that is incredibly strong. Stone plate, lock it, everything completed at this point. Unfortunate flash out of Alfari means that HUK are able to take the team fight, then take the Baron. And it looks to be all in their favor. HUK just with a complete setup here, but it doesn't realistically so, end the game for them. No, in this case, does LeBlanc have to be with the team to give Maxwell a better chance of stealing it because she can poke it out? Or is this the right call, Imad? Well, to be honest, like in this case, this Baron call from HK wasn't the greatest. The problem from Misfit's side were, was that they weren't grouped together. They have to be grouped 
looked at the death ball as well, therefore in mid, and LeBlanc was in a position from top wave, of course she has to come and help because the enemy team is forcing Nash. They could have stopped it if they came from the same angle, but they ca got caught out, had to disengage, they scattered and they weren't grouped. Uh, that has seemed to be the problem over and over, and we <laughs> said, well, power of people, you've never gone bottom lane, and in the end he does go bottom yeah. lane, but that spells out the ending for Misfits it well. goes well for a long time, but what's the fatal mistake he makes here, Yamato? So, so all he needs to do is be patient. He, he's poking the Galio that has 500 MR and 1000 <laughs> armor, whatever. He just poke him because he has Void Staff. No stress at all. Right now, he's going for the trade. Like, he's coming into the third and survives with very, very low HP so after well. he gets taunted. But right now, all he has to do is just walk north because he needs to stand in a position where he taunts both. He just walks north and he's fine. But he makes a mistake, goes back, gets taunted very, very low. Big deal now is Galio walks back, heals up, and then he TPs the Lankas in Africa. Can't come back to help, right? Yeah, so far away from the fight, has to recall themselves. That's eight seconds before you even start healing. Then you got a TP channel through, and that's where the fight goes H2K's favor for what could have been a second Baron, but they didn't need it. The death timers are long enough. You just run back down mid, catch everybody, and win the game. So, gentlemen, uh, did this game drag out so long and was so undecisive in the mid game because we saw a very high level game? Or did it drag out so long because we saw two very good teams who were curiously, curiously rather, unaware of what to do in the mid game? I, I think, like, uh, Misfits as a team, they are very good at playing by the book. By the book. But in this case, you have a scenario where oh, the mid lane is supposed to be the spit pusher. The mid lane is supposed to go bottom and take those waves. It's kind of unique in that sense. Usually Alfari is the spit pusher and that is the case. LeBlanc needed to go bottom that's kind of outside the book. And all of a sudden, the Misfits are in a position where they aren't really playing their composition correctly. And I think the problem for Misfits is the fact that the game was so close just meant that they never felt confident enough to look for a pick around, uh, around Baron. They, they played a slightly different play style with Power of Evil than we've seen, you know, where he wasn't involved so much. And, I, I wouldn't say it was like a super high level game, but it also wasn't something where nobody knew what they were doing for mm -hmm. the entire game. I, I think it's representative of where Misfits and HUK are at right now. The fact that it was close, Misfits didn't feel like they could close the game out from being ahead. And HUK with their style of playing later into the game with a death ball composition, just say, hey, if they don't want to pick us, we'll take these team fights where it's five versus five. That's what our composition is made to do. And kudos to H2K for closing that one out. The series is on the line for Misfits Gaming when they step on stage for game two. We will see if they can bounce back when we return.